Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. A subscriber asked a few good calendar related questions that we wanted to answer here in the form of a video. And it's referring to a video that we posted called Extending the Functionality of the Claris FileMaker Calendar Add-on, where we took the calendar add-on and extended the functionality. We added different features and functions well beyond what the add-on came with to begin with. So this person saw that video and then asked some more questions. Here it is. Hi, this is a great video. Thank you. I found that there is a close button at the top left of the window when you add a new record. And there is. It brings up a card window and there's the traditional close circle that you see at the top left. How can I do this with the edit record window? And in fact, when you double click a calendar event and go to edit, there is no such close button at the top left. The close button presents itself differently at the bottom right. And then, is there a way to present a warning dialog when deleting a record? So we're going to explore both of those options right now, and I'm going to show you literally from scratch how to do this and how to navigate these add-ons in a way that you can potentially do this sort of customization for yourself. And I'm hopefully going to give you some tips as to my tips and tricks on how I determine how these things work the quickest way possible. So let's start with a brand new FileMaker file. I'll create one here using FileMaker 19.4, I think is what we're at. And I'll call it calendar test and put it on the desktop. I don't need any fields for this. So I'll just push OK when that dialog box comes up. Now I have videos explaining how to do this and I do it at a much slower pace, especially if this is the first time you've done it. You'll definitely want a slower pace, but I'm just going to quickly put the calendar add on in here for the sake of brevity, since I already have videos explaining this. So here's the conundrum. When you click on a new event, which is this plus button here at the top, you'll see it brings up a dialog box. But when I use the new button, it presents a card window with an official default card close option here with this X at the top left, along with a close button at the bottom right. Now my suspicion is that this add-on was delivered in a way that they didn't mean to put this X here at the top. And the reason I believe that is because if I put an event in here, let's just say it's 11 is the name of the event, and I'll put it in for a certain date and give it some information here. If I close this right here using this option, the event does not appear. It will appear when I go up and down a month. That forces the calendar to refresh, and my event does in fact show up. Here's event 11 at 7.45 p.m. So that's one issue. And the other reason I think that it wasn't intended to be that way is because when you double click on this, you don't see any close box here at the top left. I think the intention was to use this close uh, button here at the bottom right, therefore triggering a script to force an update. And that's just a much smoother integration. So let me just say edited event like this. Now I'll use the close button instead at the bottom right and it immediately updates. I don't have to flip up and down a month to force the calendar to refresh. So that's an interesting situation. But the question is, how do you get it so that that button at the top left performs the same action as the button at the bottom right, the close button? I mean, wouldn't it be neat if we could just not use this button and just rely on a button at the top left? Maybe it's a smoother experience. In any case, that was the request. So let me show you how to do that. So the way I like to troubleshoot things like this, especially sophisticated add-ons where they're calling a lot of scripts back and forth, is I like to just put the debugger on and watch what it does while it's happening. That way you'll know exactly what to expect and where to troubleshoot. So let's first analyze this plus button to see what script it calls and how this works. So I'll click the plus button here and then use F6 on the keyboard to start debugging it, having it go step by step, stepping into each step. And we can see the script that it's currently in the middle of calling is the FC calendar add event button script. And you can see it here in the call stack as well. So I'm just going to hit F6 and watch what it does. Refreshes the object, sets a bunch of variables. It performs this secondary script here, which is called PC calendar add event. So take note of that one because this is the one that's going to eventually call that new window on step 35 here. It just called the new window. It's a card window. And 
if you take a look at the script itself, and we can do that even while the script is running, we can take a look at it. I'm going to use this pencil icon here to edit the actual script, or at least look at it. And I'm going to look at step 35 here, which is the same one it just executed, and I'm going to double click this. And lo and behold, the window option has the close enabled. So if you wanted to fix that proposed bug, you can just edit it here. Now, if I edit it in mid mid run here, it's it's going to complain and say I have to stop the script that I'm currently running. I think that's fine though. Let me do that. I will save this script and we will stop the script that's currently running and see if that actually fixed it. All right, so let's run it again. It's going to go through the same steps. And then when it brings up the new window, this time the close box is, or the close option is no longer there. So in a sense, you could fix that for yourself if you wanted to. I'll just hit F7 to zoom past this and finish that. But incidentally, uh, this individual wants to include the close box rather than remove it and instead possibly remove the close box at the bottom right. So let's put it right back into where we had it. So let me go back into the scripts and take a look at that script we were just looking at. The FC calendar add event. Step 35, new window. We'll add the close option back and save it. Okay, but there's a problem with this scenario. In fact, I've been talking about the problem since we started. If I run that same debugger and click the plus and set it up, I'll call it test2 is my event name. I'll put in an official date. I'll put it on the 9th instead. Easier to see. And I'll make it a red event. If I then choose this close option, no script is run. And although the event is in the system, it's not going to display right away until I go up and down a month, which we already talked about. So then how do we get around this? So here's solution number one for the first part of this question. I need to identify the layout that that script is calling. And after I identify the layout, I can go to the layout and add a script trigger to trigger the same script that the close button, the one that's predefined on the bottom right, would do. So in other words, I've got to make it do the same work. So first, how do I identify which layout it's on? Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can go to the list of layouts and just take a look at each one of them. And the one that looks most likely the one that it'll be called event display is the one, in fact, we need to edit. But if you didn't already know that, you could debug the layout that you're on while you're in the middle of the script working it and debugging it. Uh, so let me show you that because not all layouts will be apparent like this. So let's just say I was in the middle of a script. I will run the debugger yet again. All right, and we want to get to the point where we are looking at the layout that we're on when it pops up that window. It's going to be step 35. We already know that. All right, and right here you can just do an all stop and you might be able to identify what layout it's on based on the layout that it's calling and it's calling it through a calculation. You can see here using layout and the layout is stored in a variable called event display layout. So I could go to data viewer and check to see what that event display layout is. In fact, it does say event display. So that's one way to do it is to identify how is it calling it and is it specifically listed here? Since it wasn't specifically listed hard-coded, it was listed as a variable. Because I'm in the middle of debugger, I'm able to see the value that the debugger is showing me here in the data viewer. Or I could also go to data viewer and create my own calculation and just do a quick get, get uh, layout name. And that would tell me the layout that I'm on in the middle of a script, which is very handy. So either method works. But the bottom line is we need to go to the event display. Um, but let's continue with this script. I'm going to hit F7 on the keyboard, which finalizes this script. And now I'm going to actually edit it. Uh, edit three, let's just say. There we go. I'll put in uh, nine, nine again. This time we'll make it yellow. 
This time I want to see what script is being triggered when I push the close button. So I'll go back to debugger and click the close button. And it tells me that it's the FC calendar close event card window button. So that script is what I'll need to trigger when the user clicks this standard close button at the top left. All right, so that's FC close event card. I'm just going to grab a quick window shot of that. Now we've got that handy and I'll just finish that. So now that we know the layout, we can go into our file manage layouts and we'll double click the event display, bringing up this layout setup box and we'll define a script trigger. So a good script trigger to use when the window is closed is simply the one called on layout exit. And the script we run a run, we already know down here from my little screenshot, is the FC calendar close. Let's just look for the word close. There's probably only one called close. So that's the one we're going to run. And we'll run it while it's in browse mode. So long as the layout exit happens, it'll run that script. This script will run before the layout is exited. And I think that's okay because when you push on the close button, it runs its script before the window is technically closed as well. So that this should work just fine. So let's prove that this works and let's get it all going here. And I will go in, let's create a new event on the third and see if we can use the new close window up here. So this is a final event on the third. Okay, and we'll put it onto the third. And Fine, and we'll do dark blue this time. Instead of using the close button, I'm going to use this close button at the top left, and lo and behold, it works just like the doctor ordered. At this point, you could technically go in and delete that close button from the layout, and you'll be good to go from this point forward. Incidentally, when you double click this to edit it, there is no close button, so we need to add a close button to the script that calls this card window. And to do that, we'll have to identify what script to call. So I'll put my script debugger back on and I'll double click my event here. And we can see that it runs the FC calendar event script like it had done before. And it's going to perform this subscript here on line 27. That should bring me into the calendar get web viewer object name. So that's gonna be just a quick script to do that. Then it's gonna continue on here. And it's going to identify if the event type is a click, which it is. I double clicked it. And it's going to do some more if thens. It's going to find our data. Oh, and here it is. It brought up the new window here while I was talking. So here's the new card window, line 49 on the script called FC Calendar Events. So let me just grab that name here, put it up here. We'll stop the execution of this. I suppose we can close it, won't really matter too much. Go back into script workspace. Locate the script we just talked about, which is the calendar events. Put in the word events. And FC calendar events, here we are right here. This is our script. Get these out of the way. 49 was the script step line number. Here we go. And we've got the card window. And we'll add the close option. Push OK. All right. And the layout that it's calling is also going to be a variable event display layout. But based on what we already know about the fact that there's only one layout for editing events and it already has the script trigger, we should have no additional work to do. It should just work. Uh, now, the final thing I want to do is I want to go to that layout and remove the close button, the original close button in the bottom right. So I'll go into the define layouts here, manage layouts, and we'll go to open this event display layout, bring that to the forefront, and I'll simply delete the close button in its entirety. And now that button is gone. I'll close this layout temporarily and do a quick test. I'll double click this event and I'll change it to test changed. This is a, an event that's changed on the 9th and sure enough it took took hold no problem. So I've totally changed the UI. I've slickened it up a little bit. We're using just that close button at the top left if that's what we want to do and uh, that handles part one of this question. 
part two of the question is the delete trash can here. How can we get it so that it prompts us? In a sense, it's already prompting us because when I click the delete, that's first click. Second click is I have to actually do a second click to delete event. So in a way, you're already warning the user, you know, two steps instead of one step. But if you did want to bring up another dialog after this, we can, again, analyze what script it's calling by running debugger and then click the delete event and see what it's running. So it's running a very simple script called FC Calendar Delete Event Button. And you can see it's committing and closing the window and deleting the event without any dialog. In fact, it says with dialog off and closing the window and doing some cleanup and refresh. So that, that's really all there is to it. So to make that prompt for a dialog, it's simple. You simply go into the scripts and look for the word delete. There's probably only one in here. Yeah, here it is, delete event button. And here is our delete. If we want that with a dialog on, we can just add the dialog on. We could make our own custom dialog, but it might not be necessary. Let's just do this one, try to delete this other event on the ninth. Now we'll click here, we'll click here, and now it'll say permanently delete this entire record. That sounds like a really bold comment. So you might want to do a custom dialog for that, but it does get the job done. Now, if I hit cancel, I will, we're going to be in a situation where we're having a problem because it, uh, the, the rest of the script is not expecting that to be canceled. So we'll have to error trap that if you, in fact, do cancel it because right now it's committing and closing the window, uh, but it's also performing this script. So you'll want to do some set error capture on so that when they hit cancel, it moves on to the commit and the close without the additional prompt. So let me do that now. Set error capture on. Probably want to do a allow user abort off. Yeah, those are two standard things you do when you start prompting like this. All right, so let's try to delete that event on the 9th. First, we'll try to cancel it. So I'll delete, delete, and I want to say cancel, and then it just goes away. Now, technically speaking, do you want the window to go away or do you want the window to just stay there until they make another decision? So that, again, is your choice as a developer and you have to then decide how to handle that. But let's make sure that it still can delete. So I'll click delete, delete, and delete, and it goes away. So there's some options here for you. If you are interested in uh, learning more about the calendar, feel free to dig in. And this is just my methodology on how I tackle these problems because um, we don't know exactly how all the add-ons work the moment we start working with them. But the key here to this video and what you're learning here today is script debugger, data viewer can really be helpful in identifying what these things are doing. And then you can target the scripts themselves and adjust them in certain conditions. And many times you can adjust quite a bit and get away with it. Now, obviously there are things happening in the JavaScript under the hood for the add-on itself that is not going to be editable as easily in the interface, in FileMaker's interface. And you'll actually have to get into the JavaScript code at times to do major tweaks or even minor tweaks if it relates to the JavaScript code itself. Uh, but there's a lot you can do without having to go to that advanced step like you've just seen here. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. It was really on behalf of a question that we figured we'd explore. I thought this was going to be a short video. It ended up being a long video, just so much to talk about, so many different options we have here. But hopefully you gained a little insight into how I troubleshoot add-ons and working with these things and trying to extend them. And thanks for watching.